Okay, uh, hello everyone. So welcome to quantum field theory two path integral methods. So basically in this module or um, in, this, in this course rather, we are going to discuss how to use path integral methods to study aspects of quantum field theory. And um, you've already experienced parts of quantum field theory um, in the earlier parts of this course. For example, you've done canonical quantization in the IFT course, and you also learned how to use path integrals for quantum mechanics in the QFT one course. In this course, we're going to go on and use those same path integral methods to study scattering amplitudes in quantum field theory. And then we're going to understand things like symmetries and uh, fermions. And we're going to end by with a discussion of quantizing non-abelian gauge theories. But before we get into that, I want to uh, begin by providing some sort of philosophical words about quantum field theory. Basically, um, you know, quantum field theory is kind of complicated. It's kind of difficult. And you might wonder, why are we doing this? You know, why, why do we really study quantum field theory? And, uh, you know, it, it's going to seem quite complicated. So I want to try to maybe say a few words about why, um, what sorts of things quantum field theory is good for, rather what we can understand using quantum field theory. So here we go. So, um, so what is QFT good for? There are many things. So for example, the main thing that might come to mind, the thing that this course heavily emphasizes, is particle physics and the standard model. So um, basically the standard model is a wildly successful physical theory. It's probably the most precise microscopic description of nature ever. And quantum field theory is really, uh, you know, at its very core. Okay, so if you want to understand this, you really need to understand quantum field theory. So, you know, most textbooks that we read, and, and this whole course in general, sort of leans heavily on this point of view, but it might give you the impression that QFT is really only important if you care about high energy physics, and also that you need to build a giant particle accelerator to appreciate it. This isn't really true, so let me tell you a few other things that quantum field theory is good for. So, this is maybe not so obvious, but for example, let's think about some more everyday items, like for example, metals, like ordinary metals in the walls and stuff like that, and superconductors. These are somewhat more household things, but it turns out that these are also described by quantum field theories. Okay, uh, It's just that the quantum field theories that describe them are not relativistic, so in a sense they're a little bit harder. Okay. It turns out the low energy fluctuations of electrons in metals are described by something called Fermi liquid theory. And it turns out that superconductors are actually described by an analog of the Higgs mechanism that you're going to study later on in this course. Okay, So if you care about things like condensed matter physics, metals, superconductors, and so on, you do need to know quantum field theory. Another thing that QFT might be good for, you know, say maybe you don't care about either of those two things, you might care about water. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So let's think about water for a second. The phase diagram of water, okay, it, it looks something like this. There's, um, over here I have pressure and here I have temperature. And um, I realize that now this course is online, I could have copied the actual phase diagram for you, but let me just continue to do it in this way. So for example, if this is zero degrees centigrade, then um, it looks something like this. Um, there's a phase transition line between water here and steam here, okay? And the transition line between water and steam terminates at one point. This is a first order phase transition, which terminates at one point. It turns out that at this point, there's something called a critical point. And this critical point is described by a quantum field theory, okay? It's a particular three-dimensional quantum field theory called the 3D Ising model. So if you care about understanding boiling water, you should understand quantum field theory to describe this point right here. Okay, It's something to think about the next time you are uh, boiling tea. Well, you're probably not boiling at 374 degrees centigrade. And finally, there's one more very dramatic thing. Maybe you don't care about boiling water or metals or anything like that. Or maybe you do care about quantum gravity. Okay. 
it turns out that the so-called ADS-CFT correspondence relates theories of quantum gravity to ordinary quantum field theories. Okay. So in particular, it tells us that a theory of quantum gravity in D dimensions is exactly equal to a conformal field theory in D minus one dimensions. All right. And the particular quantum field theory that we're describing is a so-called SUN gauge theory. And by the end of this course, you will know what exactly this means and how to do basic comp computations in this SUN gauge theory, although we will not describe this correspondence in this Q of T course. So, you know, I just described a, a sort of wide set of different things. You might ask, what is it that all these different things have in common? And it turns out that basically, whenever you have a situation where you have something that is fluctuating, okay, so these fluctuations may be thermal, they may be quantum, together with some notion of locality, which is present in all of those examples, the combination of these two things is going to give you a structure which is pretty much very similar to quantum field theory, okay? And you'll probably be able to use the tools that we're gonna develop in this course to study it. So this is sort of the reason why we study quantum field theory, okay? Having said all that, in this course, we're going to describe only relativistic quantum field theory. As always, having extra symmetries like those associated with relativistic invariants are going to make our life much easier.